The benefits of working with compressed air are considerable. There are a wide spectrum of tools and equipment operated by compressed air. The choices are nearly endless. Examples of air or pneumatic power tools can range from nail guns, air ratchets, chisels, saws, specialty fasteners, jackhammers, and much more. Though safer than electric tools in one sense, compressed air and the equipment powered by compressed air can pose a whole new set of hazards and safety considerations. Management must ensure that all components of compressed air systems comply with safety regulations and are inspected regularly by qualified employees. Supervisors have a key role in safety, ensuring that only trained employees are permitted to operate any equipment associated with compressed air, and those employees are provided with and wear the appropriate personnel protective equipment for their job. Employees have key responsibilities as it relates to their own personal safety and following the rules and procedures. Prior to connecting to any compressed air system, employees are required to inspect the compressed air system, including all hoses, equipment, and tools to be used. In addition, employees must empty drains and taps according to the adopted schedule. Compressed air safety starts with the use of high-quality personal protective equipment. As little as 12 pounds per square inch or PSI directed at an eye may be enough to blow an eye out of its socket. Also at only 40 PSI directed near the ear region is enough to rupture an eardrum or even permit compressed air to enter the brain through the rupture. Pneumatic tools can generate noise levels that can be far in excess of the OSHA 90 decibel permissible exposure level. A compressed airline can reach 120 to 130 decibels, which is equal to a jet engine. With this in mind, it would be wise to choose hearing protection providing the highest noise reduction value. In addition, both earplugs and earmuffs might be necessary. The use of compressed air is more risky than some might think. Compressed air can be accidentally injected into human tissue or skin, entering the bloodstream, causing a fatal air embolism if it reaches the heart, lungs, or brain. Under no circumstances should compressed air be used to clean clothing. Use a vacuum instead. Where compressed air may contact the skin, the PSI at the point of the tool must be no greater than 15 PSI. Air can enter through your skin and cause serious injury. Never shoot air at anyone else. It's too dangerous. There have been several cases of horseplay where compressed air had been directed at a person's rectum, resulting in a serious or fatal intestinal injury. Several years ago, workers were cleaning their clothing with compressed air. One worker stuck the hose between another worker's legs from behind. The man suffered bruising and bleeding in the rectum, shock, air in the tissues around his stomach, chest, and neck. His hernia canals in the groin area were filled with air. The abdomen filled with air. His lower bowel was torn open in three places. The abdominal cavity filled with bowel material and blood from his lower bowel and the lining of his abdominal cavity was torn in several places. Despite surgery, he died three days later. You should also be aware that air blown into the mouth can, at as little as 5 PSI, result in a rupture of the esophagus or lungs. When working with compressed air, one should be aware that compressed air can cause flying particles to lacerate any part of the body. This is why we never use compressed air to clean tool benches, floors, equipment, or any place where metal shards may be present. Always clean with a foxtail broom and dustpan. Use both safety glasses with side shields and a face shield for maximum protection. Depending upon the task, respiratory protection may be required to protect against aerosolized chemicals entering the breathing zone. Be sure to check with your supervisor for training and instruction relating to respiratory protection. The term aerosolized refers to any chemical set into motion by compressed air forming tiny breathable droplets. Not only a health hazard, there is also an increased risk of fire or explosion from flammable or explosive chemicals becoming aerosolized. Be sure to check the MSDS for any fire or explosion risks. Compressors also referred to as a pressure vessel, use a storage tank or vessel designed to operate at pressures above 15 PSI. Safety and insurance inspections have revealed that there are a considerable number of damaged vessels in workplaces. This can result in ruptures that may be life-threatening. The safe design, 
installation, operation, and maintenance of compressors are essential to worker safety and health. Compressors come in all sizes and shapes, from small hobby compressors to the more familiar portable compressors to the large commercial models that provide air for an entire plant. Users must be trained and have thoroughly read the manufacturer's instructions and safety requirements for your compressor. Because air is stored under pressure, potential dangers can develop if safety practices and precautions are not strictly followed. All companies with compressors should develop a compressor safety program. The safety program should provide guidelines for the safe use of air compressor and storage systems such as training requirements, schedules for maintenance, draining lines and taps, and gauge and valve inspection. Most compressors have moving parts such as flywheels, pulleys, and belts that must be properly guarded. All compressors should have warning signage stating that the compressor may start at any time without warning. Air compressor storage tanks are usually inspected every six months at a minimum. Be sure that only authorized personnel are allowed to service and maintain compressor equipment. Care must be taken to avoid over lubing and the use of high flash point lubricants since the operating temperatures could cause a fire or explosion. During maintenance, compressors must be locked out and tagged to prevent accidental startup. Be sure that gasoline or diesel powered compressors are never used indoors and equipment placed outside is away from doors, windows, and fresh air intakes. If the compressor is portable, be sure to use wheel chocks to prevent the unit from moving from the vibration created by the equipment. Air tank safety valves should be set to the manufacturer's requirements but never above the maximum allowable working pressure of the air receiver and within the OSHA specifications. Blow-off valves should be located on the equipment and shielded so sudden blow-offs will not cause injuries. Safety valves should be ASME or American Society of Mechanical Engineers approved and stamped for the intended application. Safety valves exposed to freezing temperatures should be located where water cannot collect in the valves. Frozen valves must be thawed and drained before operating the compressor. OSHA also has specific requirements for inspections and periodic certifications. Be sure you are familiar with the regulatory requirements for your area or region. Compressors in a fixed location must have a means to transport compressed air throughout the shop or plant. Only piping approved by the compressor manufacturer should be used. Under no circumstances should plastic be used as it is highly subject to failure and possible explosion. At the end of each shift, the compressor must be shut down the air receiver condensate drain valve opened and the system bled down. The valve must remain open until the system is restarted and air begins to blow off. If your compressor is to be used for breathing air purposes, the air must be tested to ensure it is at least Class D air. A high temperature and carbon monoxide alarm must be installed on oil lubricated compressors. Also, the airline must be dedicated only for an airline respirator with its own special connectors that are incompatible with any other line. In any event, be sure to refer to the OSHA respiratory protection regulations for using compressed air as a breathing source. An air receiver or pressure vessel, simply put, is the reservoir that holds the compressed air for use. The maximum allowable working pressure of air receivers must never be exceeded. Only hydrostatically tested and approved tanks can be used as air receivers. The date of the most recent hydro test must be clearly stamped on the receiver. Air receivers should be placed so that the entire outside surface can be easily observed and inspected. Each air receiver must be equipped with at least one pressure gauge and an approved safety valve designed for that application. A safety spring-loaded release valve must be provided to prevent exceeding the maximum allowable working pressure. Only qualified personnel should be permitted to repair air receivers or tanks and all work must be done according to established safety standards and manufacturer specifications. From time to time you may have observed workers using an old Freon or small tank as an additional air reservoir. This is a dangerous practice as these tanks are not designed to hold pressures generated by most compressors and have no safety blow-off valve. Air tanks and receivers should be equipped with inspection openings and tanks over 36 inches in diameter must have an inspection manhole. Intake and exhaust pipes on small tanks similar to those used in garages must be removable for inspection. 
Air receivers must also be fitted with a drain cock at the bottom of the receiver and drained by schedule to prevent accumulation of liquid. Failure to drain moisture will soon result in rusting and compromise of the integrity of the tank. Receivers having automatic drain systems are usually exempt from this requirement. There are many horror stories where compressor tanks or receivers exploded, killing employees, all due to a lack of proper care and maintenance. There are numerous types of hoses and couplings used in industry. The main point to remember is that these lines are subject to breaking free and whipping around causing serious injury. At no time may the manufacturer's safe operating pressure ever be exceeded for hoses, valves, pipes, and other fittings. If an air hose is more than one half inch in diameter, a safety excess flow valve must be installed at the source of the air supply to reduce pressure in the event of hose failure. Compressed air lines must be identified as to maximum working pressures by tagging or marking pipeline outlets with readily identifiable signage. Every effort must be made to avoid bending or allowing hoses or lines to kink. Lines should be checked before use for defects. Since there is a risk of accidental disconnection and hose whip, users must ensure that hoses are properly secured to outlets prior to use. Though some folks may be tempted to do so, Never use hoses for lifting or lowering tools or equipment. Be sure to prevent tripping hazards, and in the event a hose must be run across a roadway, be sure that it is protected to prevent contact with tires. In addition, be sure to secure the hose to prevent it from being kicked up and caught on the undercarriage of a passing vehicle. Standard quick disconnect couplings with safety check valves provide a higher degree of safety. Claw type or twist lock couplings, also known as Chicago fittings, are often used, however, the couplings need frequent inspection as the rubber gaskets tend to wear and harden. It is important that two keeper keys or pins are used to secure the fittings together. Install the pins in opposite directions and keep them in place whether or not the hose is pressurized. Other fittings such as the Thor fitting which are normally used with three-quarter to one-inch hose must have the line depressurized prior to being disconnected. Lines with cam lock couplers must have the locking levers securely wired to the body of the hose coupler when in use. Standard brass or aluminum quick disconnect fittings that do not provide a place for a keeper key should be secured by a spring cable type of device attached to both ends of the fitting. We have mentioned this before. It is so important that we must do it again. Always read the manufacturer's instructions prior to using any tool. Only experienced and trained people should be permitted to operate pneumatic tools. There are a number of dangers associated with pneumatic tools. First and foremost is the risk of getting hit or shot by one of the tool's attachments or a fastener, so proper personal protective equipment is mandatory. When working around others, it is a good idea to set up screens around the work to prevent being hit by flying chips or fragments. Pneumatic tools that shoot nails, rivets, staples, or other fasteners must be equipped with a device to prevent accidental actuation unless the muzzle is pressed firmly against the work. Be sure of the correct working pressure for the tool and hose. Always inspect pneumatic tools before connecting to the air supply and verify that all safety mechanisms are working properly. Of course, it goes without saying, never defeat a safety device or guard on any tool. If the tool, fitting, or hose develops a leak during use, immediately take it out of service and have it repaired. Should the tool jam, be sure to disconnect the tool from the air supply before attempting to correct the jam. Before clearing a blockage, be sure to depress the trigger to expel residual or stored air. Like we were taught in firearm safety, Always treat a tool as if it is loaded, and never point a fastener gun in the direction of others. There have been many accidental shootings and deaths from a nail accidentally fired from a tool. Never depress the trigger unless the nose piece of the tool is directed onto a safe work surface, and do not carry a tool with the trigger depressed or load a tool with fasteners while the trigger is depressed. When using pneumatic tools, a safety clip or retainer must be installed to prevent attachments such as chisels from being ejected during tool operation. Well, as you now know, there is a lot to know about compressed air safety. 
We hope this information will help you continue to work a long and safe career.